Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a church. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. I love that about you. Wheeler Walker Jr. back in studio. Good to see you, man. Brought his guitar. I absolutely did. Going to hear some uh, good music from Wheeler coming up. Um, Harlan Williams was a last-minute entry into the show because I've been seeing Burning Man coverage all weekend. Big story. Big story. Was he there? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to talk about it. Well, I so the last time I saw Harlan, I was doing his podcast, and then I was like, uh, what do you got going? And he's like, I'm getting ready to go to Burning Man. That was like two weeks ago. And I'm like, oh, all right. And then each time I saw a news story, I was like, oh, Harlan is there. So then I called him on the ride in today, and I said, uh, can you check in and uh, give us a little Burning Man update? What was it like? Was it as bad as they said it was? They were just allowed to start going home yesterday because they had a shelter in place for days from that storm. We don't. I, I have a theory, Wheeler. I think uh, I think you might agree, which is I was thinking to myself, a little bit of rain, like it was a half inch. It was between a half inch and an inch yeah. of rain. We're washed out in this in this place. Our hipsters are washed to sea. Yeah at uh, you know five eighths of an inch of rain and then a couple of weeks ago when i was coming back from laguna seca i was like oh rain the monsoon is hitting you know her hillary hurricane hillary's blown into the in the los angeles and it was nothing and we shut the schools the following day even though it stopped raining that night and the sun was shining if this had happened you know forget about anywhere else in this country but somewhere like the philippines or any or even anywhere in florida like they just or in louisiana they just get fucking rain every day and maui sorry maui but the old maui they got rain every fucking day florida i think it rains every day at like four o'clock right so in louisiana it does the same so why are we so triggered and freaked out by the rain in los angeles I was trying to think about it. Like I was like, we we have such a crazed, terror, terrorized over. We're traumatized. Like well, we I have, have, a, a, we have, I have a question for you that I was thinking about when I came in. So, I kind of, since I've been, you know, playing music, one of my markers is every year, every year or so, I put out an album, and part of that process, I come into your show, mm-hmm. and it feels like every year I come to LA, and it's it's worse than the year I came before. Would you? Is yes. that something you would agree with? Yes. Every it seems year like every worse. time I come in, the airport's worse, the people are shittier, the Everything's traffic's worse. fucking worse. Yes. The the bums or everything just feels like Right. What somebody's gotta turn this place around. Well, we won't. We okay. we we stay the course. Well, I don't really care because I don't Right. Know. Nobody really cares. They just laugh at us. We had a choice between a sort of career bureaucrat to be the mayor of Los Angeles and a and a kick ass developer guy and we chose the career bureaucrat who is a black lady so we like we'd rather feel we we would rather trip over homeless people uh, walking our dog every day and feel good about electing a black woman than have some white guy with the pinky ring who would fix problems <laughs> that that's kind of where we're at yeah i feel like nashville's becoming very is is, is the new la in some ways it's, dri- it's driving me crazy too but here's my theory Okay, go ahead. With rain and Los Angelinos and in, in, in a deep psychological trauma, we freak out. We're mm-hmm. like, oh, dude, shelter in place, close the schools, don't hit, don't drive. You can't drive. Yeah. I, I drove from the Bay Area to Glendale. I arrived here at 1030 at night when Hurricane Hillary was blowing in. Nothing. It was just, just driving on the freeway. You had to put the windshield wipers on medium. We're traumatized by it. And I thought, you know what? L.A. is number one in rain trauma. It's also number one in tub birthing. Kids being born into a bathtub that's half full of water. Are we triggered? Because so much of the populace was born underwater. We're subconsciously triggered. Your first breath of air was all water. So is that kind of like a hippie-ish thing to do? With yeah, we do that here. We're number one in, in, in tub birthing, and we're also number one in freaked out by water. Maybe this is a recovered memory. Maybe these guys that were born in a tub 
17 years ago or 28 years ago, see water and think about their fucked up hippie mom and freak out. I believe that. It's, it's true. Yes. It's 100% true. It makes true. sense. If we're the number one state. Number tub one birth. tub birthing state and well, city. Like it, goes, it goes back to the back to the back your big point, which is number one in birthing pussies and <laughs> mm-hmm. number one in pussy reaction to weather. That's right. Mm. Mm-hmm. I blame part, part of my life. I blame. There's a correlation. People who are pulled out of their mom's belly C-section with tongs, not freaked out yeah. by the rain. It's all the tub babies. That's that's what I came up with over the weekend. Yeah, and that mom ain't going to be freaked out by rain either. No, she's freaked the kid out who hates mama for being a hippie tub birther. Yeah. Half the people, half the people I know who insisted on the at-home tub birth with the doula had to be rushed to the emergency room and spent three days there. Their whole thing was, we're not going to traumatize the kid with the bright lights and the sounds in the emergency room. Half of them end up going to we'll the emergency room. traumatize them with a near-death experience. How about that? That's yeah. right. And then we'll go to the emergency room, and they'll yeah, spend well, an extra few days there. If we, were, if we were made to give birth underwater, wouldn't, that have, wouldn't we be fish? We'd be manatees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're right. That's the only thing that separates us. That's right. So there's that. Uh that the tub birth is a very flawed premise, you know what I mean? Because the birth in the tub, but immediately they got to pop out of the tub and just get how long you can't spend the first 10 minutes underwater, right? You've been birthed, you can barely fit one person in most tubs, yeah. And yeah, it definitely feels like uh, we're going backwards a little, we're going bit. backwards, we're it going back to the tub. My first thought is it sounds feels like laziness some guy figured out a way mm. to give birth where they don't have to clean up all the crap from the floor mm. oh, just that's it. right yeah. it's doing the tub so yeah. it out after so um i had another moment that was uh, a modern day kind of la moment which was uh, i got my first electric car oh wow well, i i, I want to hear about it because i'm thinking about it i want to hear your opinion very la of you very la i'm full electric right and everyone always talks about range anxiety. So we have rain anxiety and range anxiety here in L.A. Those are the two most prominent anxieties we have. Rain. <laughs> I'll bet you the ones with the range anxiety have the most rain anxiety yeah. as well. It's not the dudes driving the pickup truck. Don't you think the dudes with the range anxiety, do, do they have gas anxiety? Probably not. No. So what's the difference? If you Because I'll tell you the difference. Okay. I was supposed to do a, a gig, a show, uh, not a stand-up show, but uh, I was going to go down to, um, oh, God, Willow Springs, Willow Springs Raceway, the fastest track in the West, they call it. Yeah. And uh, I was going to go do a, a car drive race thing there. Um, and they're going to put the cameras in the car, that kind of thing. Um, I'm in Malibu, and I take, the car and give it a full charge the night before at 300 miles of range willow springs raceway is 90 miles from where i'm from where i live so i got 300 then we got 90 miles then i gotta go from willow springs to corona california which is another 100 miles or whatever but we're still at 190 and i got 300 on my range um they tell you you got 300 worth of range. You got to do math every time you drive. But when you drive on the freeway for an extended period of time at 80 miles an hour, you uh, Willow Springs is not 90 miles away. It's 160 miles away. <laughs> when you get to the track, I'm at 150 now. I drove 90 miles. I had 300, but the range says 150. And now I got to go from Willow Springs, which is the high desert in the middle of nowhere, to Corona, California, but they don't take, Waze doesn't take you back through LA, you know, Pasadena, Burbank, whatever. They're going to add some miles. You go through the desert. You drive through. And, and ain't those chargers It's there. like you're driving through, yeah, it's like you're driving to Vegas. You go backside all the way to Corona, California, and I'm, I'm getting wa- range anxiety. I'm watching the mileage just go, oh, and I'm like, I got the phone out. Where's the rain? But there's nothing. We're in the, we're in the middle of nowhere. So I'm freaking out. <laughs> So I finally fi- find some town on the outskirts of town that has the charger. And the app will tell you there's eight chargers in the parking lot over here with the Macy's or whatever. And, and two of them are open. 
So you come pulling in, and I just go pulling into the open slot. And then I look and see there's a line of cars waiting <laughs> to go in to get their cars charged. You but cut you know, everybody? Well, they don't put the line doesn't go in front, right in front of the of the chargers. It goes in the next aisle over because they have to leave a it space. open for people to like back for out and drive traffic. around. I'm just driving through the parking lot, you know, a, a pure as a puppy dog. Just oh, there it is, and I you know circle around. Oh, this one's open, and I just pull in. Look at Adam Carolla, la di da, just so, cutting everybody. I get out of the car and I'm like, oh, there's a line of five cars waiting over there. And I'm like, how come no one's honking their horn or shaking their fist? And I'm like, did I cut in front of everyone? Is this one just open? Does it leave this one open? So I say to the guy next to me, you know, when you know nothing, everyone's an expert. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I say to the guy next to me, I go, is there, is, is, why no one charging in this bay? Like, how come these people aren't honking their horn? Or, and I go, that's a slow one. That's a slow one. You're going to go in and eat for half an hour and come back uh, again about nine miles put on that thing or whatever. And I'm like, shit. oh, okay. Well, I think it's enough to get me to Corona, I think. It's not nothing. I think yeah. I can do it. So I go and eat. Turns out charges it fast. Okay. But I just relied on the guy next to me. But no one else seemed to know it was a slow charger. They're all waiting for the other chargers while these two bays are open. And then I have this uh, discovery. I'm walking back to the car. And I see there's a young black man in his fully electric car waiting. And I'm like, oh, this feels like progress. It feels like social progress to me. A, a black man, young black man, even has a little bit of a street look to him, driving a fully electric car. Good. Progress. I pull out. He pulls in. And now the guys waiting in line start honking the horn and going, oh. hey, man. He did take cuts, but he took cuts into my bay that I took cuts into, but nobody cared. Why'd they let you do it? I think they thought it was a slow one. Mm. Could be the color of my skin. Could be the white privilege kicking in. But um, so now I'm thinking we made a lot of progress as Americans, but then the black guy pulls in and everyone's honking the horn, shaking their fist going, uh, -uh no, no cuts. And he's like, Fuck you. Oh. And then he gets out of the car. Then he proceeds to look at the car with the lead car with the guy yelling the most, pulls out the charge cord and starts swinging around like he's a, like it's his dick yelling fuck you with the guy. And I thought, well, all the progress I thought we made just moments ago, oh. we're right. We're right. I, it's all gone. <laughs> it's all gone now. That's all a right. crazy reaction. Well, give me your fine. Okay. So as, as, as a man thinking about an electric car, you Quick answer, yes, no. Hold on. We'll tease it because Harlan Williams is on the line. Okay. Harlan. Oh, let's see. Line one. No, we lost him. Oh, did we lose him? Oh, there's nobody on line one. Um, it's, it's good, but you need to learn the, the ways. Yeah. Meaning, I don't mean with a Z, but what I mean is, is like when you think, you got 300 miles and the racetrack is 90 miles away and it's all highway miles. You don't have three. You don't have 300. Well, they look so cool and they're not that expensive really anymore. Some are and some aren't. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're coming down and you better learn your app and your charging stations. And yeah, that, your, kind of, that kind of scares me. Your too. little, your, your, you got to learn the rhythm of it because you will. You will be passing gas stations in the desert fucking wishing you had a Suburban about now. All right. Harlan was on. That no, he's been on. On line one? Yeah. There's nobody on. There's nobody on. It's not lit I'm, I'm up. I'm seeing it on our end. He's, oh, maybe. Hmm. maybe. I don't know. Maybe this thing's not plugged in or, or something. Let's see if we can. Oh, maybe we had a little short on our side. Oh, there it is. Harlan? Hey, buddy. Oh, hey, buddy. Yeah. Sorry for the delay. We had a little tech problem. Hey, um, no work. so you're back from Burning Man today, right? Yeah, I just got back yesterday. And this is your sixth trip to Burning Man, right? That's right, bud. And is it is it gotten all corporatized now? Because a lot of people are saying it's 
all about the influencers showing up oh, and they're yeah. now glamping and it's no longer barter and trade and let your freak flag fly. It's like a fly. Silicon Valley networking event. Yeah. What's it like now versus six years ago or eight years, 10 years ago? It's exactly the same. It's like, yeah, there's a few Boucher people that have a lot of money and set up their own camp. But you got to remember, you're talking 80,000 people in trailers and tents, and then there's a little, little pocket of people that might be doing it a little more Beverly Hills. But, you know, all those people, you know, congregate on the playa, and you don't know who's who. Everyone's covered in dust, wearing ski goggles and face masks, and it's dark, and everyone's half stoned. And so I don't think it's changed at all. It's just a bunch of people having fun and appreciating the, the art and the light and the music and each other. It seems the same to me, to be honest. Is there a big orgy tent? Yeah, yeah. Don't you remember? I met you there two years ago. How, thanks a lot. Oh, I told you I was a top. I don't. Anyway, let's not relitigate that. <laughs> Yeah, there there is a big orgy tent. I've never been to it, but um, you can't go into it alone. You have to bring a partner. But it's not something, you know, I don't want to be in a giant tent with a bunch of naked people from Bakersfield and Fresno and Hollywood, you know, writhing around in their own COVID juices. So I'm going to pass. <laughs> so what's a day in the life of Harlan Williams at Burning Man? You're You're in your RV, right? Yeah, and you're, you're not you're not much of a drinker or, or partaker in drugs, are you? No, I'm not. But if you're ever going to do it, that's the place to do it. But um, the the festivals, you know, it's more than just drugs. It's art. It's music. It's it's spiritual. It's it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. There's a lot more there than I think people understand. I think they think it's just a bunch of hippies jumping around, but it's uh it's a lot more than that what kind of music uh it's you know you'll have everything a lot of it's electronic and house music but you can also um you can also find a, a place where they're doing a beatles retrospective or an 80s night or a disco night so it's it's all it's all kinds of stuff and when did the rain come and what was that like so we got there Tuesday. We had Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday just to have a great time. And then Friday afternoon, the rain started coming. And by any other standards, like if it rained like that in L.A., it would have been a night of a, of a rainstorm. There was no thunder. There was no lightning. It was just kind of a, you know, a steady maybe eight hours of rain coming down. And... You know, eventually, because you're on a dry old uh, lake bed, it started to accumulate, and then you've got you know about an inch of water. But the uh, the 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 the, the uh, lake bed is made of this really fine silt because it used to be a 500 foot lake with schools of fish in it and everything. It's a the playa is the second largest flattest place on planet Earth, apparently, and. Wow. Uh, so the water just pooled, and because it's got this uh, silt in it, like a silica, it cakes. It's like pancake batter, so it sticks to everything, and it just sort of locked everything down. But there was no flooding. There was no flash flooding. There was no torrents. There was no rivers. Nobody was in danger of floating away or being swept away. And um, The other thing is stuff dries out pretty quickly. Once, uh, once the sun comes up. So it was blown out of proportion a lot. So it was more news doing what they did two weeks ago when Hillary blew through L.A. It's like, oh, my God, cyclone bomb and blah, blah, blah. But it wasn't nearly as doomy and gloomy if you were at Burning Man. Oh, my God, Hillary was brutal. I mean, those are some of the most dangerous dry streets I've ever driven on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for Burning Man, you know, they said there was an Ebola breakout. They said there was uh, the National Guard coming in. They said there were flash floods. None of that existed. None of it ever existed. It was just sort of we had a bad night of rain. Wait till it dries before you get out and tons of mud. So, yeah, there I was mean, a... some people didn't 
me. You know, there was a car that, that tried to get out right in front of my trailer. They got stuck. The lady came back the next day and started wiping the mud off with wet wipes. So I don't know what kind of mushroom she was on. <laughs> and then another car, like 30 feet down from us, tried to get in the mud. They rotated their tires so much, their car lit on fire. Whoa. So there were some casualties, but, you know. did uh, Yeah, there was a report of, of an actual casualty. Everyone was talking about that somebody in their 40s died, but they didn't give a reason, and it, that's what sparked a lot of the Ebola rumors. But have you heard anything? What I heard is that um, somebody was walking around in their bare feet and and got electrocuted, that they must have stepped on a cord that was Ooh. in some of the pool. And water. Now, that's what I heard. I don't know if that's factual, but that's what I heard from someone on the ground at Burning Man. That seems very plausible because I've, I've not hear, heard anything, a guy in his 30s. I, I didn't hear drug OD or I didn't hear anything. Uh, what about the ride in? Because I was thinking about you on the ride in, because remember these activists, environmental activists, tried to block the road on the way in, and the Indian yeah. reservation uh, sheriff guy just got in his truck and just plowed right yeah. through the guy's trailer and blew it open. And they showed pictures of the line of cars on the single lane highway that just went back for miles. But did you miss yeah. that? I missed that. I play Burning Man smart. I always go in two days late, so I miss that giant um, rush and that that bottleneck. Mm-hmm. But yeah, these guys uh, they they dragged a trailer across the road, and what they don't realize is on the reservations they have their own police force and their own laws. And I don't think <laughs> I don't think uh, you know the Native Americans take kindly to. Uh, white college kids coming in and putting barriers up on their land. So it probably wasn't the best move in the world. We got to so. recruit those cops to come out and be LAPD. Cause when oh my God. people, it just reminded me of when, when cops were effective, you know, but it, it's funny because here's these environmentalists going up there in their big trailers and their, their cars and they're using, toxic paint and they're you know spray painting and it's like okay how's that for the environment so it's just sort of interesting that they use that forum to you know these eighty thousand people wait all year to have a week of fun and six people with a environmentalist sign tried to destroy it it's not really fair go go do that in front of city hall or on the the capitol steps but don't take away everybody's you know summer vacation for your cause you know agreed and so is there bartering going on or is it just cash like when you want to eat at night yeah how, what's the food yeah. situation like so you gotta remember most people rent an rv or go up in an rv and those rvs are fairly luxurious i mean if you bought one they'd be like probably 40 to 60 grand a pop so people rent them, and they've got working sinks, working stoves, working microwaves, working showers, working toilets, working kitchens. So when you want to eat, you just, on the way up, you pick up your rations. You go to Walmart or Ralph's. You buy a week's worth of groceries like you do at home. You put it in the fridge, and you eat the way you'd eat at home. So just and, Oreos. Captain <laughs> Crunch for breakfast and dinner and lunch. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing like eating a bowl of Captain Crunch on the hood of an RV. I tell you that <laughs> that spurring engine just does something to me. But there is a barter system there where the principle of Burning Man is: um, if you need something, you just ask. There's no money. There's nothing to buy. So if you did run out of food, you could go to your next door neighbor and say, "Hey, can you make me a sandwich?" And the principle is, they say, "Of course." And and I've done that many times where I just wanted a Coke, and I just knocked on a random door and said, hey, can I have a couple of cans of Coke? And what's beautiful about the festival is nobody flinches. They just, people are very giving there, which is beautiful. And are you making friends that continue past Burning Man? Yeah, oh yeah. You meet, you meet If you meet someone there, you, you, you know, you sort of make what I call Burning Man friends because it's sort of like a culture of people and it seems like a certain type of person gravitates towards Burning Man. So you 
you sort of become friends with with these burners, and then if another friendship develops into that outside of that, then yeah, I think it happens a lot because part of the, a Burning Man is about letting your guard down and not talking about your work and your money and your status. It's just about talking about anything and acceptance and and you know not putting up barriers. So it's very refreshing, actually. It's a, it's like a week of living very freely. Did once you, once they you, lifted the driving ban, how how long was the delay? Well, it depended on your mindset. I <laughs> was very resourceful, and um, I got out. They they said that they shut the gates and locked the gates, but to a degree, that wasn't true. And so I kind of I was parked really really close to the exit road, so I was able to actually get on the exit road very early. And to my astonishment, on Saturday, the gate and the road was open, and I got out in 20 minutes, the fastest I've ever got out. But I think it's because they told everyone to sit there, and so there was no traffic. But just because of my proximity to where I had camped, I was literally right beside the exit road, so I was able to just get on it and go. Did you run into Chris Rock or Diplo (laughs) or any of the other notables? Uh, I did bump into Chris Rock. We were in the orgy tent, and uh, <laughs> I said, whoever you are, you're squeezing me too hard. And I opened my eyes, and it was Chris. But no, I did, I did not I did not run into Chris or Dildo. What's his name? Nimrod. Dildo. <laughs> Dildo. Like butt plug. Uh, uh, Dip- I, oh, did Diplo. 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 That's right. DJ. I don't, oh, what's that? DJ. Yeah, I Is don't that know. A sex toy? He's a he's a DJ. I guess they got picked up by fans. They walked out. They I walked guess. six miles and then got picked up by fans and were able to get yeah. a ride out on the back of like a pickup truck. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. So for you, it's still pure. It's not been politicized or corporatized. Uh, it's still the experience is still good, and you're definitely going next year. It's an amazing experience. It's almost too big for it to be corporatized because, like I said, even if a a building moved in that it was like Gucci of Beverly Hills, it's such a massive place. It would be a little speck of sand in a in a vast oasis of people and structures. And so, um, it is what you make it, and it's it's very different than anything you'd ever do in your life. I recommend people try it. And um, I would definitely go back. And it was sort of sad on the TikTok and the Instagram, seeing so many people being negative. And I heard people going, oh, they deserve it. I'm glad those hippies got stuck. And, you know, they're leaving a giant carbon footprint. And I'm like, my God, isn't anyone allowed to go out and have fun anymore without everything becoming a social or political agenda? It's, It's just like, wow. I agree. And uh, last question, Harlan. How much does it cost? Does it cost? How how do they give you wristbands? Like, how how's it work? Do you have to get tickets in advance? Are, are do, there do tickets? Do you own the RV? No, he rents it. Rents it. Yeah, it's not cheap. That's for sure. It it's um you have to sign up for a, a ticket lottery in advance, like in April or May, and then they do a lottery online. And if you get a ticket, it's about six hundred dollars per ticket. But remember, it's like a nine day event, right? And then you you have to if you don't get one there, you have to kind of find one on Craigslist, or sometimes they offer. For more money, like fifteen hundred bucks, you can get a guaranteed ticket. They have a few of those available, and then you have to rent the RV, which my my RV probably cost about almost seven thousand bucks with the insurance and the cleaning fee, and uh, so it's not cheap. But I'll tell you what, I've been all over the world, and there's no other place on planet Earth that's like this. I mean, uh, it's so hard to explain. It's literally like beaming onto another planet. You'll never experience something as far out as Burning Man. So, hey I Harlan, think- hey Harlan, my name's Weirdo Walker Jr. I'm a big fan. I have a question though. Um, yeah, I'm a guest on the show today, and I've always want not wanted to go because all I hear about is everyone's covering shit. How dirty do you get? 
Well, that's part of the charm of it. There's, yeah. there's actually a thing that happens because of where it's located, where dust storms whip up. And periodically, sometimes they last 40 seconds, sometimes they can last two hours, but this dust whips up and it covers everybody at some point. And instead of thinking it of being dirty, it actually unifies everyone and joins everyone. And it's actually really fun because think of it, where do you ever go to an event where you're kind of going through dust storms? And so they add drama, they add character, and they add ambiance. It, it, it's really, it's so really trying to stay clean would, would, is a is a losing battle. No, it's not. It's because, like I said, they're not. It's not. It's only dust storming intermittently, and you can go in your RV and shower off. And so, no, you're not as dirty as you think. But it sort of gets on everyone and everything, and unifies everyone in a way. Um, I will say this in closing. Because that was a powerful statement. Yeah. The dust statement was powerful. If you watch the end of the movie Volcano, oh yeah, with Tommy Lee Jones and uh, the late great Anne Hayes and others, at the end when they put the lava out, all this ash goes up, and uh, it, it 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 goes on the black people, goes on the white people, goes on the we're Hispanic people. Then we're all yeah. and 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 it's we're, very symbolic together, where they go. We're yeah. all I can't tell the difference, and I think that's what you're <laughs> alluding to at Burning Man. Am I right, Harlan? Yeah, it it gets on everyone, and it just sort of makes everybody one and unifies everyone, and it it really actually adds to the charm and the allure. When you when I first went, I was like, oh, I'm not looking forward to this. But when I left, it was it was actually very, it was it was it was really cool, liberating. Harlan, I want to yeah. thank you, Harlan. The Harlan Highway, great podcast. I've been on it a few times oh. as well. Yeah, you were just you were just on it uh, last week, the Harlan Highway podcast. So can't wait to have you back. We'll throw dust all over each other and have an orgy. <laughs> uh, HarlanWilliams.com is where you go for all the live dates. Thanks, Harlan. Thanks for checking in. Thanks, buddy. Take care. Thank you, buddy. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I love his spirit. Yeah, I, he has a great he has a great spirit. Yeah. He really does. Yeah, in my head, I hated it, but he kind of he almost talked me into right? it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could because he doesn't seem like your typical Burning Man dude. No, he that he's he's straight. He's Canadian. He's not into the peyote. Like he he eats like a nine year old with autism. Yeah, he's, Wheeler. What would it take for you to go to Burning Man? Um, like after hearing that, I'd, I'd, uh, I still I'm still not going. Uh, I mean, a million bucks maybe, but like you he, could you could perform for the yeah. Club. I, I would I would play. I think that. Is it called EDM music? Yeah. Electronic dance? Yeah, that's I, 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 I feel like I would just be in my camper <laughs> at 11.30 night trying to sleep, hearing that fucking pulsing bullshit yeah. with the worst music in the world. A lot angry. of countries doing that now, isn't it? Like, they're very pop-oriented. and they Yeah, have there's it. a lot of that shit that just sounds like... Uh, um, I actually opened... Speaking of which, I, I did a tour once opening up for Kid Rock, and I would try to get to sleep early because we had to leave early the next morning and sleeping in my bus outside Kid Rock show. You just get used to falling asleep to... You know, Kid Rock's hit songs or commas. If you're through through a bus, it's kind of like EDM a little bit. Just boom, <laughs> it's like boom. sleeping in a drum. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Wheeler's going to play a song. Oh, we got more stuff to get into, and uh, I even got I got some Yoko Ono for you guys as well. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, cool. we'll do all that right after this. Just Thrive got so much stress. I know, you just want to hit the pause button in life and breathe. Well, Just Calm from Just Thrive can help. Just Calm's all-natural blended mood-lifting psychobiotics and brain-nourishing B vitamin helps you take back control and feel the most cool and calm and collected version of yourself. Multiple studies prove it works quickly to soothe everyday stress and sharpen focus in as little as four weeks. Or you can try Thrive Probiotic. That's the one I take every day, a spore probiotic that banishes gas and bloat so your gut can produce more serotonin. That is your happy hormone. Plus, it supports better sleep as well. I love it. Try it for yourself. You'll feel the difference. Uh, Tina was on the show and uh, went out to dinner with her and her husband. They started this great company. You should support them, and you're going to feel good about yourself. It's just Thrive, right, Dawson? 
With Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic, you'll have the ultimate stress-fighting duo to help you feel cool, collected, and in control. Get 20% off your first 90-day bottle of Just Calm and Just Thrive Probiotic today. Visit JustThriveHealth.com and use promo code ADAM. NordVPN. I travel a lot. I'm off to Hawaii this week. That's right. So, unsecure airport and other public Wi-Fis. Well, that's a hacker's dream. I use NordVPN to protect my data. And if I'm outside the U.S., like when I go to Goodwood, oh, that's a great event, I still have access to all U.S. streaming services, so I never miss my shows, and I can change my remote location with just one click, NordVPN. It's the fastest VPN in the world. I don't sacrifice internet speed for better security, and you shouldn't either. I can have NordVPN on up to six devices. Get an exclusive NordVPN deal at nordvpn.com slash Adam Carolla. That's nordvpn.com slash Adam Carolla for that deal. You can try it risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Love me some Wheeler Love. Walker, the new album, which is available. It's going to be available September 15th, wherever you find finer music. It's called Ram. Um, and if memory serves, Ram is the name of a Paul McCartney album? Am Paul McCartney does have an album called Ram. Mine's more about actually ramming than uh, his. Ramming. Yeah. His actually, I think, is it's about a goat. A, I think his has a picture of a ram on the cover. Are you familiar with that one? No. I think, I, it, I think it's his first uh, first solo. Maybe his first solo. The, no, not the first one. Of the early, early solo. Ones, yeah. Oh yeah, Linda and Paul McCartney. There you go. Um, did what, what did year Metallica is that? cover? No, somebody AI did. Ah, it sounds just yeah. like James Hetfield. Like <clears throat> yeah, they got these. Everyone does now AI covers. Where mm-hmm. like, hey, Metallica covers Wheeler Walker Jr. And it sounds fucking dead on. I was like, because as you can tell, I went a little harder on this record. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's more of a rock record than my country shit. Cool and um, I was like, in my head, I was like, I wonder what Metallica would sound like doing this song. And someone else, obviously, with a computer, thought the same thing. And they made it. It sounds dead on Metallica playing it. Yeah. Uh, what Ram, song was Ram, it? It was this one. Yeah. Oh, same one. song. Yeah. We, uh, Ram was 1971, by the way. Yeah, that's... that's I mean, good. the Beatles broke up in 70, right? Yeah. That's like fair use by now. Uh, yeah, but that's his first, that must be his first solo. Yeah, it's the only album credited to the husband and wife music deal of Paul and Linda. Oh, well, now that brings me to Yoko Ono. Oh. Uh, let me tell you the problem with the... You like her yet? <laughs> the problem with Sirius XM in the Beatles channel is they can't just play Beatles songs over and over again because there's not enough Beatles songs to... So, fulfill the requirement that's a of lot 24 there's 7 totally enough beatles songs. there's a ton of beatles songs but they'd have to repeat them fairly yeah. regularly yeah i if mean they, if there's a catalog they have to go yoko. through everything got to go through harrison's catalog yeah. they go if through you're about to tell me that they're playing yoko on the beatles channel uh, yeah. i'm gonna be pissed yeah. okay oh boy, so the problem yeah. with the beatles channel is it's really heresy to the memory of john lennon because they end up playing Yoko songs, and then they do deep cut solo John Lennon stuff, which is fucking horrible. Like people don't realize that John Lennon, while gifted with the Beatles, solo stuff is fair to middling, kind of weak. But those are the hits. Once you get into the deep cut, 
uh, John Lennon solo shit, it's junk. And so all you do is you drive around and you go, oh, I guess I don't like John Lennon as much as I thought I did. And then his bitch is singing too, and you're like, fuck John Lennon. <laughs> oh. So they've done irreparable damage to Hold the on, memory these, of these John songs Lennon. John Yoko together? Uh, I tuned in the other day. It's also funny because you think you're you just got to tune in and you're going to hear Paperback Rider or, or, you know, Norwegian Wood or something, and you just hear a fucking horrible John Lennon song, possibly a horrible uh, Ringo song. Uh, yeah, Ringo Solo. Ringo correct. Solo's there's horrible Ringo stuff in there, horrible <laughs> Lennon. And now they've even started digging into Yoko, who I heard singing, not I don't know if you'd call it singing. Though. No, she she wasn't screaming or wailing. She huh. was you, you wouldn't call it singing, but she was. But it was non screaming. Yeah, I don't know. We pulled. We may have pulled a, a song or two over did there. You, did you ever see the clip of uh, John yes. and Yoko with, with Chuck, Chuck Berry? Berry? Yeah, that's oh, the greatest. That is great. Beautiful. It's great. But I I'd only seen her yodeling. I'd never seen her. I almost feel like yodeling is yeah. too kind of a word. Yeah, it's it's too good. It's not fair to Jewel. <laughs> All right, we'll play a play a little Yoko. This is the closest thing I've ever heard of her to her singing. Yeah. Can I say one thing about this though? Yeah. This is the perfect example of the def- of what lowering the bar does. Yes. Because she, all she does is screaming, and I hear this sounds to me like fucking Bob Dylan compared to her other shit. <laughs> <laughs> all right. By the way, the YouTube video of this has a parenthetical that says "comments disabled because of lack of respect." <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's another, uh, let's see, we had another one of her singing about war men or something like that. <laughs> Sounds right. I'll, I'll try to think, if I can think of the name of the one that I heard on uh, Sirius XM. I'll play a little more. It's a war zone. Men flashing their guns and balls. Women looking like Barbie dolls. Yeah. Wake up, wake up. <laughs> Hold your life. This from the Barbie soundtrack? <laughs> out to chill. Out to kill. Wars This sounds what I thought Burning Man was like. <laughs> like, like <laughs> if you played this for somebody and they knew nothing. While we knock each other to make our day. All right, you can is, that. He, is Yoko the like the early DJ Khaled? Because I'm looking at her bio right now, and they're saying like she's respected and people pay tribute. Like Elvis Costello loves her. Sonic Youth. Yeah, they just, but they're just fucking they, saying that. But that that song was that was you know what bugs me about that? She thinks she's she's solving war. I guarantee you that that would start, start a war. war. That would start a war before <laughs> it ended a war. All right, made me angry. But here's here's a th- simple thought experiment in terms of respecting her. Uh. Let's just say she wasn't the widow of John Lennon, who's the most beloved musician on the planet. Now, I think he was a blowhard douche, and I, I hate the song Imagine, and it's, it's the, it's, the song Imagine is the anthem for every fucking crackpot with every bad policy in California. We so remember that's the why I hate video. that part. Yeah. But let's just say she wasn't the widow of John Lennon. Let's just say her husband was Joey Buttafuoco. <laughs> and her, now we're just going to judge her art alone. Just It's no attachment to John Lennon. Just her husband's Joey Buttafuoco, and let's hear her music. Everyone would fucking hate right. this bitch. Or if John Legend wasn't ripped away from us in the manner that he Lennon, was. Sorry. John Lennon, excuse me. Then, yeah. then, Hold on, which one was married to Yoko? John Legend or John Lennon? Um, I, I, don't think, I have to look point. that up. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, if, John Legend is married to a shrew <laughs> as well. S- similar, yeah. yeah. So if John Lennon was still alive, would we see his demise and would we hold Yoko in a much lower light? I, I think... Like, did the murder it helped. It was the part. Everything was perfect in the timing. First off, he'd be me too right out of the business <laughs> right now if he was alive. He's a big 
I mean, big womanizer, big time. There, wouldn't, there'd be, wouldn't, wouldn't there'd be any, stories. Every, how is every rock star not Me Too? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so, didn't, didn't even Steven Tyler come out? He was dating, like, fucking some kid. Yeah, who, there's everyone he, has a story. He, Steven Tyler, I, I give him a pass because he looks like he's 14 when he's naked, and I can't even tell if he's a dude <laughs> but or I'm a saying, chick, but, you but, know? But, but I'm saying, didn't, didn't we give him a... I mean, he's, he's fine. He's not in jail. He's okay. Yeah. Does, so we did so. give him, we did give him a pass. In your songwriting, Wheeler, do you, does that come to mind? Like you don't want to get canceled or me? Oh, I don't give two fuck. I mean, my point. I want to get canceled. That's the whole point. Yeah, it's like free press. I just, I just, I stopped. As you can tell, I stopped giving a shit many years ago. This but, is why I'm doing it because of all that bullshit. Yeah, there the the song I was trying to think of, Ben. It's just flashing my head. I should have should have written it down, but it, it was the day. I drove from Malibu to um, the high desert to the racetrack, um, then Willow Springs. Then I drove from Willow Springs to Corona. That was two hours. And then at 6.30 when we wrapped, I had to drive from Corona to Malibu. I was fucking in the car for seven hours that day with range anxiety all the way. And about 10 <laughs> minutes from getting to my house in Malibu, completely e- exhausted by a 17-hour day, Yoko came on, and I was fully traumatized. I was, I was like a tub baby. <laughs> I was <laughs> I to- tub baby traumatized. Well, that's kind of, I don't think range anxiety. I was plus, TBT. Range anxiety plus Yoko sounds like it doesn't sound like a good combination. <laughs> they don't. So... Uh, it was it was a song. It was about the rich man. Not I'll read Richmond. some of the titles here. So we have Instant Karma. No. Have you seen Horizon lately? Give Peace a Chance. The Luck of the Irish. And but, she's also just covering John L- Lennon. Those are John song. Lennon songs. Yeah, she covers them. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Every man has a woman who. Uh, I can't start to cut off there. Don't. And by the scared. way, you're talking about being canceled. He's got a song with the N word in it. I think. Am I right? It sounds good to me. But yeah. so does Elvis Costello. Um, Mob speaker. Rich? Does that sound right? Mob Rich? No. I, don't Moby think, Rich? Mob I Rich? think it was based on a book or a poem. I think it was based on a book. Now ah, Ben can, can look. It's something to do with money, something to do based on a book or a poem or, or something. Anyway, it was, it was horrific. Ben can keep, keep looking, or you can keep looking. So here's what Yoko did when she sung words that we could understand. When she was just screaming and yodeling and uh, caterwauling, as your people would say, uh, I was like, well, she's talentless, but she's still doing something. Like Jackson Pollock, I don't know if he's a good artist or bad artist because he just sprays paint out of his ass onto a canvas, right? Right, haphazardly. But... But, you know, like, I thought that about Andy Warhol, but Andy Warhol was a graphic artist. He, he could draw, you know, but he, he didn't, he chose to do something else, right? But he could do it. So when Yoko sung, that was me, like, saying, okay, you're an artist. Yeah, I'm an artist. Okay, well, instead of spraying water, spraying paint on a canvas on the floor, here's uh, a picture of uh, George Washington. Now paint it paint George Washington and she just painted a fucking stick figure. Yeah. Then now I'm like, oh, she isn't an artist at all. She's going to spray sound. And by the way, my my feeling is, whether it's Yoko or DJ Khaled or whoever, if you can do it, if you can play the guitar, if you can write a song, if you can sing, if you can play the keyboards or whatever, and then you choose to do this stuff, then I'll give you a pass. But I don't think you can do the other stuff. And that's where we're at. Well, where I would com- talk about the DJ Khaled, well, I don't f- think that similarity really works is because he's got no John Lennon, and he seems to be doing he's pretty— He's figured out a way to fool the nation. He's people, John Legend. Pe- pe- people are listening. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it, but peop- he's got an audience. And, 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 and I, other artists really respect him, and they work with him I don't constantly. know about that. Well, they but work I, with him a lot. Well, I'm sa- because he, <laughs> because he, he can make them money. Yoko yeah. can't make anybody money. God— what is the name of that song? I have to keep going. Yoko singing song. Should have fucking written it down. Um, you, shoot. you remember like a line? I just remember it was based on a book or maybe a poem about um, rich men or something. 
Um, also, here's a subject. That's a, she's a weird person to hate rich men, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, she has to pretend like she's poor. Yeah. Uh, Walker, the aptly named Wheeler Walker. I don't know if you guys experienced this, but I'm putting this theory together. Okay. Uh, I was flying home from Chicago um, a couple weeks ago. Mike August and I both sitting up in first class. We're wiped out because we start off in Appleton, Wisconsin. We leave the club at midnight, and I'm literally meeting Mike in the lobby in the lobby three thirty in the morning oh, to drive from Appleton to Chicago O'Hare, drop off the rental car, go through security, and be on a, like an eight fifteen flight. We're, we've been up all night. So we're both reclined in our first class seats trying to get a little shut eye on the four or five hour flight back. And we have a stewardess who's an attractive young Asian woman, loud walker. She's a loud walker. My daughter's a loud walker. I know women who are loud walkers. I yeah. don't know as many guys that are loud walkers, which is weird because we're carrying an extra 70 pounds. This chick was 100 and. 18 pounds, sopping wet, clunk, 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 clunk. And I didn't say anything. And like, Mike didn't say anything. Like, we're both like trying to sleep. And at one point, he just like, he was on the aisle. He just like, this chick's the fucking and that's loudest hard to hear in an airport. walker in the world. And the planes have the hollow belly, you know, so they're up on the, you know, what they're walking on sheet metal or whatever. But you got to do something about your loud walking. I, I, I wake up in the morning. I can hear my daughter. I, I'm not on the same floor as her. I can hear her coming down you that hall. You have to like know. Chunk, I mean, chunk, chunk. Sometimes when I get new shoes and it squeaks when you walk, oh, I'm so conscious of it. I'm tiptoeing well, around. All right. Why don't the loud walkers know they're loud walkers? Is there something to do with athleticism that stops you from being a loud walker? I was always kind of light on my feet when I played sports, and I'm a super quiet walker. And I know I'm a quiet walker because I have a, a Guatemalan nanny named Olga. And every time I walk into the kitchen, I'll come up right on her. And she just turns around and goes, Ay! and I go like, what? And she'll go, you don't, you don't make noise when you walk. I didn't, you know, it, it always scares the shit out of her. But I'm a quiet walker. Many women in my life are loud ass walkers. And that stewardess is a loud Well, walker. can I make, is this, is this okay to, uh, time to make a confession? Mm-hmm. I'm on the wrong side of this. I am a loud walker. You're a loud walker. My wife tells me all the time that I'm walking loud, and I don't know, <laughs> maybe I just grew up not noticing it. Well, I think it's the, I don't think it's my weight. I'm not a particularly large person. I think it's. That's an attitude. I think it's a, yeah, I think I may be. The way I land on my feet, if that makes sense, like I hit. I think some of it is mechanical, and some of it's attitudinal. <laughs> yeah, I think it might be might be like the cowboy boots, but without when you're barefoot. Yeah, like I'm used to having like a big giant, like kind of hard heel. Yeah, I'm thinking of too hard on the heel. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think Skinny it's, Asian chick, fucking, we couldn't sleep the whole flight. Just chunk, 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 margin, clunk, yeah. clunk, clunk, and I wasn't making it up. Mike got it too, and I think it's, I think it's part mechanical and part. Attitude. I think added to me. I think it is attitude. Like I still got my, I'm a badass mm. with my strut, even though I'm just it's 3 a.m. and I'm taking a piss. You know, right. it's mm -hmm. like I can't turn it off. It's very interesting that my son makes no noise walking down the hall, but his attitude is a no noise attitude. Like he doesn't want to be noticed. He doesn't want to get. He doesn't want to disturb anybody. <laughs> he's got. He's low key. So the question is, is are the loud walkers, is that something that carries over into all aspects of their life? Like, are, are, would the loud walker, let's just say there was the quiet walker and the loud walker, and they're uh, waiting, waiting at li in line to fill up their car at the electric filling station or at the gas or at the supermarket, and like someone slid in front of them in line. My supposition is the loud walker is the one that yells, excuse you to the person and the quiet walker just looks down. Yeah. There's like a subconscious drawing of attention to you. And yeah, also a woman, by the way, if a woman tells her man, Hey, you're a loud walker, soften it up. The guy will try to soften it up. If a man tells a woman that it's a fucking hate crime. It's an attack. Oh, I, I've, I've given, I've tried really hard. I'm trying, <laughs> trying to do a quiet walk. Yeah, I know because I get a lot of shit for it, but I don't know. How, it's like, if you never really thought about changing the way you walk is very hard. Maybe 
Oh, and now I'm thinking about my friend Matt, who lives in an apartment in the marina, had to move his unit because the woman above him is a loud walker. I lived under a loud walker. Woman? Yeah. I think women are the loud walkers. It ain't the weight. They're, they're diminutive. Because there's a click. There's an attack to it. There. There's something. I, I don't know what it is, but I think women are loud walkers. You live under. He had to move units. He literally he had a great unit. <laughs> and it's like, I cannot. We can't be in this unit. This person never stops walking loud. Yeah. Up there. But also just moving a lot in general. You can't, you can't really live either. Mm. I've been under people who just. See, all, it seems like their full-time job is to walk from the kitchen and back. That's all we do. <laughs> also, there's the people, I've had these roommates, too, that just never fucking leave. They yeah. never leave. Like, if you're a roommate, you got to leave. You got to have a job. You got to have somewhere to go. You got to sleep at your girlfriend's house every once in a while. You can't just not leave. If anyone has had the roommate that never leaves, it's the fucking worst, even if you like them. Yeah, because the thought of, I wonder if, if uh, Chris is home, never the answer is always home. Right. And if it's like if it's three in the morning, it's like, and he's always he also doesn't sleep. He's in the fucking he's watching TV till five in the morning. Yes. God, I hate that guy. All right. So you know what though, Loud Walkers, you should name your kid Loud Walker. You know, what? I never thought about that. But maybe I will <laughs> <laughs> name him. Uh, you know, it'd be good like Rowdy Walker. Rowdy Walker would be cool. That's good because it. Or I can also I can just start calling him that. Yeah, they're calling him Rowdy Walker. So loud walkers like yourself should be teamed up with and forced to marry other loud walkers. You shouldn't, because your wife's clearly going insane with your loud walking. Yeah, she's going insane, but the other thing, too, is it's not something you, it's like most things in marriage, you don't really notice it till you're married. It's not Uh something I would have ever thought about, like, oh yeah, everyone before we get married, let's, let's, let's each check each other's, let's get out the... The meter and change each other's walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're when you're newly in love, everyone's a ballerina. Exactly. Yeah. You want to play a song for us? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, yes. I'll talk while you go get your guitar. Loud walking is probably like snoring. Like if you confronted somebody about it, they probably wouldn't even know they're a loud walker. Oh no, they don't. They don't know it. I had no idea. I did talk to my daughter about her loud walking. Didn't go great. <laughs> That makes sense. I, I don't know. I feel like women aren't as open to constructive criticism. But I think it's from not playing. Team I think sports. anything physical, like you can't criticize anything physical. Mm. All right, Wheeler, what do we got here? So this is from my new record. Um, we're fixing to go on tour here, tour here, and it's a fucking rock. We're playing all the old hits, of course, that you guys know we played here. But this is the new album's is a nonstop rock album, beginning to end. This is, I kind of consider this like my. Um, if you don't know much about me, this is my origin story. It's called Born to Fuck. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you know, Born to Run. That uh, yeah, sure that old thing. This is called Born to Fuck. Came out my mama's pussy with my dick in my hand. Slapped the nurse's ass and said, I'm your man. By the time I got to juvie, I was knocking them down. I was a teenage pussy hound Girl, just your look I was born to fuck Girl, just your look I was born to fuck Now I'm a big time star on the big tour bus Got a load of bitches hanging on my nuts I give it off to him, baby, one at a time You wanna suck my dick, you better get in that line Girl, just your look I was born to fuck Girl, just your look I was born to fuck The Lord blesses us all with different gifts On the day he made me, he spent all his time on my dick, my big ass dick. Girl, just your 
And and we we just appreciate your candor. I mean, you never really let people in to your origin story. Yeah, it was kind of it felt vulnerable. Yeah, me, yeah, it? yeah. You 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 let your guard down. Yeah, it was about time. I felt like yeah. Explain why why I'm here. It's Thank beautiful. You. Jeez, Thanks what's so that Yoko Ono song? Now it's driving me nuts. I haven't stopped looking at him. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> keep trying. All right, keep trying. Uh, we'll take a break. We got some news to do. Michael J. White is going to join us uh, after we do the news as well. Um, Wheeler's going to hang out with us, and we'll do the news right after this. Morgan and Morgan, let me lay a stat on you. People 15 to 24 had the highest rate of emergency room visits due to car accidents of all the age groups. Oh, man, my kids are in that age group. Now I'm worried, but thank God there's Morgan and Morgan. If you're ever injured, you can uh, check them out. Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide, more than 800 lawyers, more than $15 billion recovered for 300,000-plus clients. Morgan & Morgan has proven that they have a track record, and they will fight to get you the full and fair compensation. They've been fighting for people for over 35 years Racing my vintage cars is hard, but submitting a claim for Morgan & Morgan is easy. Am I right, Dawson? If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R-ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Well, good news. It's O Rewards Member Appreciation Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Get the most out of your membership. Shop, earn points, and get rewards sent right to your phone or email. If you're not an O Rewards member yet, sign up. It's quick and it's easy. You can do it online or in the store if you like. Just ask one of their professional parts people about joining O Rewards next time you visit, and you can start earning points on your first purchase. Sign up for both email and tax and get even more out of your membership. And right now, members receive two times, three times, up to eight times O Rewards points on select purchases. Those bonus points can help you get to your next reward even faster. You receive a $5 reward for every 150 O Rewards points, and you can use your reward on your next in-store or online purchase. So don't miss O Rewards Member Appreciation Month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store and O'ReillyAuto.com. So I'm looking to flee, you know, Southern California. Um, Where are you thinking about going? Anywhere that has a Top Golf, a PF Chang's, and a Spearmint Rhino. Well. And it, that, it that, doesn't mean I does, like all those doesn't, things. It doesn't narrow it down much. It, um, what it does is it says, this is a civilization. Well, my issue with Nashville right now um, is, not, besides it kind of turning into kind of L.A., mm-hmm. is, I think it's part of the reason it's turning into L.A. is a lot of L.A. people are coming to, to Nashville and, turning, and putting their L.A., shitty L.A. attitude into the city mm-hmm. and building just fucking... It's bound to happen. Yeah, it's it's kind of turning into this kind of like redneck Vegas kind of thing where it's mm-hmm. like you know, everybody's every star's got not that I don't want a Wheeler bar, but everybody's got their fucking bar on Broadway and right. It's just bachelorette parties and it's fucking it's a fucking yeah. it's a fucking drag, man. L.A. 
oh, my God, like I was having dinner. Uh, well, you're so, from here, though. I'm from here, so I've got to watch it happen. Uh, I was having breakfast with my daughter, who's working, interning with uh, Mark Garagos, and uh, she's got to go to the downtown office. And and I'm like, how's that going? And she's like, oh, I sometimes I have to go drop off stuff at the bank and do stuff like that. And she goes, but they give me pepper spray. Well, that's cool. And I'm like, this is downtown L.A. People are scared to walk around in downtown L.A. because there's homeless people. And so what we do is we go, well, give the 17-year-old some pepper spray. Awesome. Or you could <laughs> fucking do something about That's it sad. la it's it's it is beyond sort of confusing for me i just i i don't get it but we deserve every motherfucking thing we get because we never stop voting for the same fucking people did you who think it was better when you were a kid here yes homelessness didn't exist so what do you again i hate to, i don't want to take over your show but what do you think it has led to all this we started getting into chick think big time, and we started electing chicks and putting Barbie movie chicks shit. into every city council and everything. And a lot of the guys started ad- adopting chick think, and and we're here. So chick think, dude think is uh, you steal catalytic converter from a Toyota, you're gonna get fucking arrested. Uh, chick think is blame Toyota for making them too easy to steal, which they've actually said. That's chick think. Do you have think enough, is, do enough think chick is, think? Dude think is born to fuck. Chick think is, let's end the war. That's song, right. That's know. that's right. So we've been, t- we have a tsunami of estrogen and douche, and we're drowning in it. And and again, remember our governor, chick think. Gavin Newsom was chick think. He's a dude. Chick think. Uh, Garcetti was our mayor. Chick think. Too much chick think leads to shit policy leads to this. It's not mechanical. There's no engineering to it. There's no math to it. It's just feelings-based. If there's too many people of a certain color in prison, then don't arrest people of that color. That's that's how they solve chick problems. Chick think, you know what chick think is? Chick think is every one of these fucking cities who, who announce their sanctuary cities, they just announce it. We love. There's no, no one's illegal. Love is for everyone. We will not judge, and we're a sanctuary city until the first fucking load of migrants gets dropped off, and then they Whoa. go, "What the? What are we going to do? <laughs> we don't have any plan for this." Yes, that's chick think. You've you've made the announcement that you're a sanctuary city, so now we're going to start dumping off migrants, and you're fucking freaking out. Every that's interesting. Every, I never e- thought about that. Every. Sanctuary City is a chick think city. Well, I feel like Wheeler is here to, <laughs> as the antithesis of chick think. Yes, you're not. Everything I do is dude think. You walk like a dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I piss. I piss like a chick, but I walk like a dude. Ah, <laughs> uh, so Wheeler's talking about how he doesn't care about getting canceled. He wants it. Mm-hmm. There's also another guy who kind of has a similar take. Woody Allen. Mm. So he was at Venice. Uh, um, for the, before, not to interrupt, but thank you for the comparison. I really appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, Wheeler they're, and Woody Allen. They're both wordsmiths. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was at, Woody was at the Venice International Film Festival uh, premiering his new film, Coop de Chance, or Chance. Uh-huh. Um, received a five-minute standing ovation mm. afterward, by the way, because you know, mm. they, they love to clap for these things. Uh, but at the same time, protesters reportedly gathered outside the premiere uh, criticizing the festival for giving Woody Allen a platform. Mm-hmm. Um, so Allen's appearance at Venice marks his first major film festival appearance since 2016. Wow. When he was at Cannes. Uh, what is he, 87? I mean, you don't have to look it up, okay. but someone will look it up. I mean, he ain't 81. He's closer to 90 than he is to 80. Yeah. I, 87. And he was what? What did he? What All did right, he hold do? on. He, Shouldn't he, everyone just stop and applaud me for a second? I didn't look it up. I've, <laughs> I've no. I know he's old. That's well, all I, I got. Nothing. No. Right on. So the next he's, scene. A, he's, Chris, he's, huh? a, he's accused. Specific number accused, eighty-seven. You know, it's not eighty-five. He's accused child molester, right? Is that the? Yes. And they just invite him to a film festival that's, and give him an ovation. That's right. So that yeah. people are really upset about it. So he won the. Is that? The, <laughs> I see. To me, that's legitimate. Ups- I should be upset. Well, it's they. They gave him the Roman Polanski medallion, oh, and no. that's why. That's yeah. where people, yeah. I think, feel passive. like they're 
just rubbing it in their face. So that, that I would agree with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So an interview asks the 87-year-old uh, if he feels like he's been canceled. And Woodyard responds, I feel if you're going to be canceled, this is the culture to be canceled by. I just find that all so silly. I don't think about it. I don't know what it means to be canceled. I know that over the years, everything has been the same for me. I make my movies. What has changed is a presentation of the films. You know, I work and it's the same routine for me. I write the script, raise the money, make the film, shoot it, edit it, and it comes out. The difference is not, the difference is not, is not from cancel culture. The difference is the way they present the films. It's the, it's that, that's the big change. Hmm. Yeah. Well, he's got F me money, which is more than F you money. And at a certain point when you're that old, I mean, so that's like you go. That old guy just but went also, through. The- yeah, exactly. He, if you even how much you don't when you're 87, f you money is probably 13 grand, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when you got four years, right? He's got tons of di- tons of dough. Mm-hmm. And he's at that point where you go. You know, that old guy went to the supermarket. He's wearing his pajama bottoms and he grabbed that chick's titty. And you're like, yeah, what are they gonna do? Yeah. He's old. He's old. What are they gonna do? Lock him up. We want to go through that process. Yeah. yeah. Or, or give, give, them, give them the plans. You can do what you want when you're old. Yeah. Yeah. But All right. But anyway, new movie coming out. And uh, yeah, enough. F- do you think it, it's, a, it's a kind of a European thing? It feels like they're, they're more open to this shit. Mm. Yeah. Because didn't Polanski flee? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. Do you think that that's... Because they seem to be fine with it. They seem to be a little more open to the old dude, young chick... Uh, equation. It seems seems more baked into their culture yeah. than ours, and and then just generally having some bitches on the side. You know. Well, how I mean? about how about I'm com- now I'm just a guy coming up with solutions. Your free trips to Europe for child molesters from America to you can go there. Go do, do it there. Mm. One way ticket. One way. Yeah. Yeah. They have countries that have sex tourism. Hmm. Can you imagine, like, just being a temp at that office, you know, I mean, answering the phone <laughs> at the sex tourism travel agency? Yeah. That was fucking... The well, guy, hold on. Go back a step. I mean, what do you mean by sex? Like, to go to sex clubs and shit? Like, all right, let's just say you're a businessman here in Burbank, California, and you have a hankering for a nine-year-old, but we frown upon that here in Burbank, but you can go to the Philippines or Thailand or somewhere, and uh, there you can kind of do it, like what we do with fireworks in Mexico. Yeah. You know, we can't get the good shit here. But yeah, you go to Tijuana, you can get some good shit. But I, and if I like fireworks, then, then I'm going to TJ. These are real bitches. So, so you, you can go to, like, the Philippines and just, they're, it's legal. I no, don't want to, I don't want to insult no. <laughs> uh, Chris's people, but, look, I think maybe Thailand is probably a, place i don't know what's number one on the destination for uh sexual <laughs> tourism plus it does kind of ruin it for all the single middle-aged dudes who just want to see thailand yeah you know it's like bert's going i'm well, going I'm to thailand oh, oh i got gotcha. you yeah oh, bring yeah. your condoms bro i'm bringing my camera <laughs> oh yeah sure, and sure. your condoms camera, and you your sicko. condoms yeah you always say yeah, someone says they're going to thailand like yeah hey, hey, what are you doing out there yeah i always yeah. heard about thailand for hookers i didn't know about the that shit uh, I don't know. I don't know what the number one destination for. I've I've seen some documentaries on <laughs> on that, and yeah, it's Thailand. Oh, it is. But right. it's also, I think Vietnam. All right, it's all but the places the, that don't have yeah, money. Yeah, that's what whatever. When you start getting into selling kids, it's usually places. You know, it's not the yeah. Brunei or some OPEC nation. It's usually, usually the kids are super poor. Not a lot of nations. electric cars there. Not a lot. No. And if they do, they have like three, three wheels and you're sitting on the basket or something. <laughs> not many charging stations. No, Mm-mm. not a good network. Um, so speaking, we were talking about that loud Walker stewardess mm-hmm. on your plane. Mm. Well, would you rather, I think you'd rather have heard than this guy. So Delta airlines, there's a flight from Atlanta to Barcelona on Friday night and it was forced to turn around because a passenger just had crazy diarrhea. Oh, God. Um, yeah, the, we actually have the audio oh. of, that the uh, pilot reaching out to air traffic control. So it took off from Atlanta, did you say? Yeah, to How, Barcelona. Uh, to Barcelona? Yeah. 
and they wow. were forced to turn around around over central Virginia. Okay, so Atlanta to Barcelona. I mean, that's it's gotta a big be an eight hour flight. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Anyway, let's hear it. Negative. It's just a, a biohazard issue. I, you know, we've had a passenger who had diarrhea all the way through the airplane, so they want us to come back to Atlanta. Diarrhea all it the way like he, through yeah, it the like airplane. He put it out like all like it was. It didn't land in the toilet. Was the issue? That's what. That's yeah. what he is saying. So there's some people on uh, X that have been tweeting about it, claiming that they were on the flight. So one guy said, quote, both my wife and I were on the flight. It was a mess. The pilots made the right decision to turn around. Wow. The ground crew ripped out the carpet and put new in. Considering the circumstances, the ground crew did a great job along with the attendants and the pilots. Some other person said, it was dribbled down the aisle, smelled horrible. The vanilla scented disinfectant used on it only made it smell like vanilla shit. After the plane landed, it was thoroughly cleaned. They didn't leave until around 2.30 a.m. Yeah, so I mean... Vanilla shit was that 60s white blues band, right? Yeah, vanilla. I saw vanilla shit live there. Oh, good. good. Yeah, yeah, classic. Ginger Baker used to play the drums mm-hmm. for them? Um, wow. All right, well, you know, the bad news is we're getting off the flight. The good news is we're definitely getting a fucking free hummus box when we're <laughs> when we're going to Barcelona. There's no fucking way they charge you for that Miller Lite. I tell Light you, I'll bet nowadays coach, they right? don't, I'll bet they don't do shit. Mm. They got to hand you at least a fuck, couple of natty lights on that plane. You get a do, free do you, drink. Do you want Natty Light while you're smelling vanilla shit? Mm. No. So uh, now the person's, it's a, it must be a dude. Yeah, they're, not, they're not obviously not releasing any info about the person, but. We have, we may the have the Yoko Ono song. Okay. So I'm, so I'm told. So we'll see if, see if it's the right song or not. Well, it's as bad as any song I heard. (laughs) What did John have to say to her? He was in the Beatles. You know what I mean? It'd just be like if you owned a comedy club and... You saw Robin Williams break through there, and and um, Bill Cosby, and uh, you know Chris Rock or something, and then your son started doing co- comedy, and he was fucking doing <laughs> knock knock jokes. Like, wouldn't you have to say like, mm. I mean, didn't John Lennon have to like say it's, that's not it really like music? It seemed like he liked it. I don't know. Maybe she was a loud walker, too, and he just fucking couldn't. Maybe he's just paralyzed. Maybe he was a loud walker. That was the best he could get. Oh. <laughs> he could have been a loud walker because he was barefoot walking across Abbey Road. Or was that Paul? That was Paul. Paul, Paul was, Paul was oh, Sorry. All right. I was trying to connect two things. What else we got? All right. Um, oh, just uh, have you reached out to Jay Moore recently? Cause oh, it, it has yeah. It's been reported that he has, he is now <clears throat> married. So he he was married to Jeannie Buss, the Lakers owner. They on Sunday during a small intimate ceremony in Malibu, where about twenty close friends and family members were in attendance. And uh yeah, the bride and groom looking happy as can be. Yeah, I found that out. Fucker said he was gonna invite me. But I guess if it's miniature, that's small. Yeah. In Malibu. Uh it's right on the water there. <clears throat> well that's what do you think what's she worth? She Billion? Oh, it's got to be more. Well, I don't. I don't know. What, what's the Lakers franchise worth? Because she has. I think there's maybe it's broken up into eights. Is um, Google says that the Lakers are worth six point four four billion. I think she's good for a billion. And she's probably got more shit than that too. Oh yeah, she's got. You know, probably like inflatable mattress and camping so shit. So a woman and, like that, does she have to, she makes him sign something, right? I think he's signing s- yeah. stuff, lots of stuff. Exactly. I make him sign shit before he comes into this building. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. If I had six, it was worth a billion dollars. But Ooh. yeah. Yeah, that's good. Good for Jay. Yeah, good for him, man. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know, I, 
I, I should talk to Gergus about this. Like, I don't know if you can sign a prenup that just goes, you get nothing. You just sign a prenup that says you don't get 50% of a billion. Well, I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, I, I, I assume it's not, can't be that. It's not going to be nothing if, if they get well, divorced. Well, if, if you're worth a billion and you give, give two million, you don't give two fucks. Yeah, that, I mean, you know, the, the issue with, like, Kevin Costner, the issue isn't giving her 40 grand a month for the rest of her life. The issue is giving her 250 grand a month for the rest of her life. That's, that, those are the issues. All right. What else we got? Um, so, The Rock and Oprah. Mm. So, they, they got together and made a video they posted on Oprah's Instagram that... Um, were, is, it, is it just me, or do people not really give a shit what Oprah says anymore? I don't think it's just you, because she's... I, we, and the way I know that is she is everywhere now, and, like, she's trying... It seems like she's trying a lot harder than she Are was. Are people finally discovering that she doesn't have anything to say? Is is that what's going on? Because she, she, she does the same thing the chicks from The View do, which is they entertain unemployable people. They, they, they entertain people with zero IQs. And then they talk about feeling, chick think. They talk to their unemployable audience and they tell them things that are not that interesting, not that, you know, she's a circle talker. She talks about being your best self and discovering mm-hmm. your light. And once you discover your light, you can discover other people's light. But well, what, what, what's her outlet now? It's just social media? Yeah, like her and Gail King just do some videos together and they go to Beyonce concerts and I talk about I don't it. know. I just feel like nobody cares what she has to well, say I d- anymore. I definitely don't give a there, fuck. there was a time when it was like Oprah says and then people people would listen. Well, she seems to disagree because mm. she and The Rock they made an Instagram video where they're inviting people to donate to their new Maui fund mm. for those affected by the wildfires. Okay. Well, yeah, that's so they good. called it the People's Fund of Maui. Mm. But Every comment on this, our our users and viewers um, asking, wait, you guys are worth it, like a billion dollars more mm-hmm. than that. What, why aren't you giving money? Mm. This is insane that you're asking us to donate when you could be helping yourselves mm. and probably get do do better or give a bigger donation. Do we know they have? Ha- they probably did, right? They got to prime Actually, the pump with something. Yeah, but I I mean. Look, I'm not one of these people. I'm, here's who I am. They go, oh, that guy just built that library so he could put his name on it. All right, well, you fuckers got a library. Yeah. Uh, right. So that's one more library than we had, you know. And there's also that thing where, you know, you hear about some guy and goes on tour and gives everyone a bonus of $10,000. They go, he can afford a lot more. Yeah, he can afford, but that's still 10000 more than they had the day before. You know, I'm... I always side with the people that are at least out trying to do something. Right. So I'm with, I'm, you, I'm with Oprah. I'm just saying, like, if you're running for president, an endorsement from Oprah used to mean something. I don't really it, feel like it means anything. It was a game anymore. changer for your business, for your yes. book, for anything. For I just feel like it. America's caught up to her saying nothing. It's been 35 years of saying nothing, and now... We caught up to her. Well, what mainly, what, I mean, she, her big, plat, big platform was the show that's been all, off the air how many years? I don't know. I'm not gay. Her last interview was with Meghan Markle and that hairy dude. Oh, right, that's right. right. And people hate them. Yes, so good. Maybe, maybe that was the kind of... The, they're the next generation of nothing talkers. Right. Meghan Markle is the young... When Oprah goes, and yeah. we need nothing talkers... She then Megan will jump can, in and fill the void. Show. Yeah, I, I just didn't think I'd see the day because Oprah was untouchable, right? Like she could do no wrong. She Everybody's was, she's queen. Everyone is kind of turning on everybody now who's got a couple of shekels to rub together. We're we're turning on Zuckerberg. We're turning on Elon Musk. We're turning on everybody who who is successful now. That's yeah. the new world order. Yeah. It, it, it's like, a, I don't know why, but yeah, it's, it's a certain trend, especially in social media. Mm-hmm. Like I was following somebody who posted their house and they go, oh, things we splurged on. And it's like, oh, we got two dishwashers. We got, uh, we got another set of washer and dryers. And everyone's just like, oh, like they're, they're upset that these people bought all this stuff. And it's like, 
why can't why can't we be happy for them and just move no? On? I'm, I'm upset oh. they posted it. Yeah. Well, the, no. The reason people are upset is when they said two dishwashers and they posted a picture. It was just two Mexicans standing oh, in the kitchen. That was, that was offensive. Yeah. Yeah. That's Chris. You misread that. The, yeah. The, That's why people are upset. The chains didn't <laughs> yeah, help either. Yeah. <laughs> the listen. I was just talking to someone about this when I gr- was growing up in this town. If you were rich. You would end up on a show and we get a full tour of your house. Yeah. Like Candy Spelling would be walking you through Aaron Spelling's 57 room mansion and she'd go, This room is just for gift wrapping. Yeah. This room is an entire room. <laughs> and I'd be sitting home going, what? Fuck, they got a room that's twice as big as the bedroom I grew up in just for wrapping gifts. Would that anger you? No, I'd go, Fuck, these are so successful. These people are like, Maybe I could be successful. Maybe I'll get a gift wrapping room. Or, uh, you know, a closet just for my antique dolls or something like that. If you were rich, you got a tour. They took a tour through your house and the show opened up the veranda and there's the infinity pool in the backyard. And it was all, everything was to the nines. No celebrity home tours now. No. Like if, you, if you just. Or if they open their fridge, it's it's bare. It's, um, yeah, they, you can't talk about that. You came from yeah, money they're, they're anymore. Yeah, they're trying to be the man, man of the people, too. I think people are, in, with inflation and the economy, people are so pissed. It used to be, like, I'm with you, is like used to be, man, I want to be, like, the richest dude in town. Now it's like, fuck that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. So it's bad because we used to be sort of aspirational. That, that was the whole point, and now we want to tear it down. Have you ever felt embarrassed being rich? No. Okay. I started a thing on Loveline 25 years ago. More. I would tell, I would go, I'm a millionaire. Literally. Literally a millionaire. Literally a millionaire. I would say it over and over again all the time. Everyone hated it. But I was early money on this. Because this was something that's been going on for a while because I worked for K-Rock Radio. And K-Rock Radio was about 45-year-old DJs pretending like they were 23-year-olds from Orange County <laughs> wearing like flip-flops and board shorts everywhere. Like, hey, bro. And I'm like, these guys make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and they're fucking walking around. Now, you had to pretend you were poor and you were like young. And I immediately rejected it. I was like, I'm not, they told me, they told me, stop talking about flying first class because none of the people who listen to your show can afford to fly first class can't relate and i go well fuck them first off i'm not them i'm i'm me i'm i'm the guy with the microphone they're the guys sitting in their shitty cars so i'm not pretending to be them pretending to be them is what you do when you don't have any ability when you don't have any ability the number one quality you have to have is not pissing people off but if you're fucking good it's the same with sports you hit 300 and 41 home runs every year. You can act however the fuck you want in that locker room, in the clubhouse. You can do whatever the fuck you want. But if you're a fringe player, you better you better start sucking time on the sort of dick. So I was like, I'm not the guy. I don't give a fuck. I'm not going to pretend like I'm poor. You guys are all hacks. And you can wear your board shorts and your flip-flops. I'm going to be talking about flying first class. So it was around. It's been around for a while. I've yeah. always rejected it. If you earn, And I have the the great honor and distinction of coming from nothing from people who didn't give two shits and never fucking did a thing for their kids and knew nobody. So Dr. Drew would shut up because he felt guilty because his dad was a doctor. He grew up in a nice home and he he went to college and he felt like he got a leg up. Mm -hmm. And so when you feel like you got a leg up, then you have to kind of watch it because someone's going to go, yeah, yeah well, zero to a million is a much bigger deal than you would have been fine anyway to a million. Yeah. So I grew up in squalor and then n- never got a break and then became successful. So I was like, fuck right off. I'm not going to pretend like I'm poor. No, no fucking way. But think about this thought experiment. Think about like Mark Zuckerberg and all the rich guys walking around. They're all wearing board shorts and flip flops, right? All of them, you know, all Mark Cubans and all this. You see old pictures of dudes waiting in bread lines in the 20s. They're wearing suits. 
<laughs> it's quite a juxtaposition. Yeah. The guys waiting in the fucking slop line were dressed nicer than the than Amelia. So no more no more tours of the homes and no more walking out with your uh, pinky rings because we don't want to get attacked. Right. That's yeah. That's there where was, I, when I was a kid, they used to have that lifestyles of the rich and famous. That must be gone. That sh- that show. You couldn't do it anymore yeah. because you couldn't get these celebrities. I mean, think back. Even cribs, okay. yeah. Have, we, if if Tom Cruise was a you know mega star back then, or any of these comedians, or anybody, we we know exactly what their house looked like. They don't do it anymore, and they're not going to do it. Oh. My feeling is this is not a good direction. Poor people. You need to fucking work harder. Stop shitting out kids. Work harder on your education and get your shit together. It's not going to correct. Us not knowing that what Oprah has is not going to help poor people. But also, aren't you smart enough to know that she ain't living in an apartment? We know she's got money. We know Tom Cruise has fucking got 50 mansions. Don't we? Yeah. Look, everyone gets it. But, I mean, it's uh, what I always say, uh, documentary director Michael Moore dresses like an out-of-work lesbian trucker. And then when he goes on Howard Stern, and Howard Stern's like, your net worth is 50 million bucks. He's like, oh, well, no, come on, not me. No, no, I mean, maybe with the house. I, I mean, that was an insane, it's an insane conversation of him saying to Michael Moore, well, you're a millionaire. You got to be a millionaire. You got one million dollars. He's like, ah, blah, 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 blah. So yeah. movies have grossed millions and millions of dollars and had no budget. He's a millionaire. Yeah, people are really shy about that. Like, you ask a lot of the guests who come in who have like a hit song, go, "Hey, are you set for life?" Yeah, and they're, they're always really standoffish about it. They're scared, yeah. and the, and they're scared. I'd be bragging about it if I, if 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 one radio station would play my song one time. <laughs> <laughs> there are not enough beeps in the world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, let's bring it home because we've got uh, Michael J. White yes. waiting over there. Wheeler Walker Jr., everybody. The album, Thank Ram. And uh, always and, good to see you, my friend. And watch his music video, Dump Truck, oh, yeah. on YouTube. Great, great vid. Old school. Take a quick break. Back with Michael right after this. Via tour experiences are what people love most about travel. I mean, God. Taking my son fishing in Alaska. That was so amazing. I'll never forget it. Viator. It's a website and app for booking travel experiences, like seeing Stonehenge or a walking tour of Rome. Over 300,000 bookable experiences in 190 countries. Millions of real travelers' reviews. So you have the information you need to book the best activities for your trip. With Viator... There's always flexibility and support with free cancellation, payment options, and 24-7 service. So let's get out there and experience life, shall we? Download the Vitor app now and use the code Vitor10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. One app, over 300,000 travel experiences you won't forget. Do more with Vitor. The movie is called Outlaw Johnny Black. It'll be in theater September 15th, and it's good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you too, bro. So uh, maybe Black Dynamite you were plugging last time you were here? I cannot I know. recall. But It's been a minute. Let's talk about the process. Um, you're starring in. Mm-hmm. Are you writing as well? You wrote, starred, um, catered, uh, did everything. So you got to raise the money first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that a slog? Yeah, it is, but, you know, it's, it's necessary if you want to keep control of the whole thing. So just like with Black Dynamite, what I did is I, I started with a, a, a trailer. You know, I, I did my own trailer, and it kind of showed you what the end result would be. Mm-hmm. And so that tended to make the, the uh, financier trust that I knew what I was doing. Right. Yeah, so in the same situation, I did that. With this movie, because you know it's hard to sell an intangible. No, I I agree, I and mean, I don't know if that's a new newer thing doing like a trailer. Yeah, well, you know it, when nuance could be, you know, can you know can be misconstrued, especially if I if I if I ask somebody to, to picture what I think is cool, they're going to come up with a different picture than right. I have. 
Right. right. So if I show it, then you got it. Right. So if I if I set the tone with something visual, and you you can just go okay, I, I I'll I'll sign on to that. Then I get you know then I got it. I don't have to be derailed by somebody else's view. Do you want to sort of operate outside of Hollywood intentionally, or is it just it's a, Hollywood's a bitch and you have to wait for people to give you roles and? Well, it, honestly, I I. I I'm always surprised when Hollywood gets it right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because I go, "Well, how did that? <laughs> how did that happen?" Because a lot of times it's it's they're so formulaic in the their ways that they go about things that you keep seeing the same damn movie over and over. Right. And so, like, um, when I see a movie that has something unique to say. I'm going, well, how did some 70-year-old guy not mess this up? Right. You know what I mean? Uh, that's why, like, I think with television, with, uh, with all the things that, uh, that I've been seeing on these, you know, these, you know eight-episode runs on, on things, mm-hmm. that's been the best entertainment that I've seen because I, th- I think there's a pure voice there, something that people are kind of signed up to, to take the, the, the whole ride with you. So you're essentially seeing six-hour movies, you know? Right. Uh, so, th- yeah, I, there's something to that. And then movies itself, to me, just took it down. It just really, I don't know, I hadn't been impressed by many things because, well, because of that formulaic thing. Do you think it's all the sort of IP, the intellectual property, like everyone knows who Spider-Man is, so we're going to do a whole shitload of movies on Spider-Man because people heard of Spider-Man, like we're mm-hmm. going to do a lot of part twos of everything and sequels and then we'll do a prequel when we run out of sequels. Yeah, yeah. it's just so the business and it's so the, you know, uh, it's for the sheeple. I mean, you know, not to downgrade it, but, but that's why McDonald's is where it is. Right. I, mean, I can't really, you know, hate on it because it works, right? Yeah. But it doesn't give people uh, an experience. And, I, I, you know, I, I don't go to McDonald's. You know, it's fine for other people, but I don't want to watch McDonald's. Yeah. So for me, I you're going to get McDonald's out of the business, especially. So that's not what I'm I'm interested in. I want to I want to do something that I want to I'd want to see. You know. So for for this, the only way to do it sometimes to me is outside of uh, the business. In in my my perspective, when did comedy start to, you know, enter for you? Because you're mm-hmm. martial artist. I think you have black belts in seven disciplines. Yeah, eight of them. But eight. That's but an I'm, old bio. <laughs> but the the crazy thing <laughs> is, is people who know me, they describe me as funny, which is hard to believe because you see me, you know. I mean, if you tend to kick somebody in the head in a movie, that kind of takes over for mm-hmm. a lot of people because uh, a lot of people don't do that. But I've actually, if you lined up everything I've done, I've done more comedy than anything else. Mm. Which is a little weird to, you know, kind of understand, especially since I, you know, I'm walking around with this. I got this male RBF, you know, <laughs> and people are scared, you know, because mm-hmm. because they, you know, different imagery. But is no, that resting blackface? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's resting bitch face. Oh, bitch male face. resting bi- bitch face. Oh, that was a hate no, but, crime. But yeah, but blackface that's a whole different thing. <laughs> but it, it's it's but you know, uh, people who. I mean, it's hard, even if I'm in a drama, it's hard for me to keep the comedic sense away from me. Mm-hmm. I've actually written a lot of comedy and sold things as a, as, a, as a writer, and I've even written for, like, stand-up comedian friends. Oh, I've really? Come up with it. I've been doing that for years. Uh, and a lot of stand-up guys, you know, they, they try to encourage me to, you, you, come on, you got to do five minutes. Come on, <laughs> just do the story of this or that, you know, but... You know, it's it's still I'm I'm dealing with, I guess the assigned imagery that I'm I'm working against. Do you now like a movie like this? You got to shoot it in I don't know how many days. Twenty two. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a lo- that's not a lot of time. No, not a lot of which time. I but... always tell people the budget is more about the time than it is about special effects. That's exactly right. You buy yourself time when you get a little bit of a budget. Yeah, and then when you're in every scene, and you have twenty two days shoot, mm-hmm. and you're also you wrote it, so you're kind of 
you're kind of writing it. You're not writing it while you're doing it, but you're listening to it and kind of rewriting a lot of stuff or messing with a lot of stuff as you go. Or at least you have to wear that hat. You have to be responsible for that. Well, yeah, I mean, you just kind of like, it's like as a director you, and, and producer and everything, you got to, it's kind of like a bullseye. You, you know, every other department represents one of the rings. Uh-huh. But you got to see the whole target. All right. right? And so, um, and even with the, with the uh, performers, being that like every, you know, it's kind of kind of like, well, I used to teach acting. I, I used to teach, I was a school teacher as well. Uh-huh. So I'm kind of, putting all those hats on and you're just making sure that you got these talented comedians, but you make sure that they're servicing the narrative, right? (laughs) They're not flying off because they want to do something in a moment that doesn't help with the the storytelling. Yeah. I remember I was making a boxing movie and my character was poor and lived in a shitty apartment. Mm. And so we're setting up the scene where I was in the kitchen with my girlfriend, and I look down, and I see this beautiful, like, $170 trash can made out of, like, spun aluminum. It's like a really high-end, nice trash can, Mm. and it was the trash can that my character had in his kitchen. And I said to the set guy, is that, why does this guy have this super expense? This guy's down on his luck. You're Mm -hmm. not buying $170 trash cans. And he said, "Uh, "Ah, that's a trash can they gave me that told me to put in the whatever, and I said, I said, wait a minute, I ordered a really expensive trash can for my house. Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah. I go, you sure you didn't just find it at the warehouse and take it and put it on here? And he's like, yeah, I guess that's what I did. And I was like, well, <laughs> get the fucking trash can out of here. You can't have 170. Right. Da- but the point is, is you can never, if you're just acting, you can just go sit in your trailer and right. memorize your lines. But mm-hmm. if you're producing and writing and stuff, you feel you feel like you have to be staring at everyone all the time. Well, see, that's the thing. That's that's why directing it's a it's a luxury for me because I tend to be the guy to see this trash can all the time. Like if I'm if I'm in uh, just an actor in the movie, I'm going trash can. Uh, the lighting is we, we're losing light on that side. Right. Uh, my mind, my directing mind and producing mind is always active uh-huh. so with me directing and i'm you know i'm i'm getting people who see the trash can uh-huh. i get, get folks i always say that there should be a a, a, a title in every movie and te- television show uh and call the common sense coordinator uh, because yeah. common sense just doesn't seem to be that common and i just happen to be the guy watching movies and television going what the hell yes you know what I mean? So, oh, do I know? I, you know, so um, for me, I see that it's just blaring yes. to me, and so I get a chance to, when I'm doing something, since I'm detail oriented, and since I'm a, a tough judge while I'm watching stuff, then I, I, pre- I pretty much take care of those things because yeah. I'm the first one that's going to notice. Who are you liking in the uh, fight game? Are you, are you watching a lot of boxing? You watch more UFC, mixed mixed martial arts. Got All Israel it, Alessandro man, I, fight know. coming up. Oh man, yes, uh, I'm 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 a fight nerd like to the highest order. Who do you like? What are some of your favorite boxing matches? Well, well I mean, I, the man I was talked to for an hour yesterday, Floyd May- Mayweather. Mm. That's my he's my favorite. I mean, he's the most talented boxer I've ever seen. Yeah, but that doesn't always make for the most exciting fights because of his talent, because yes, of his defense. Because I'm, a, because I'm a nerd, so I, I I appreciate the defense on another level that some of the purists may not. Well, you can't yeah. teach that kind of defense. Right, right. You can't even really teach that kind of movement. Right. And that's what happens when an amazing athlete right. becomes it, a fighter versus a guy, you know, like... Um, Ricky Hatton or something, just mm. a guy who was a tough guy who like slug it out. Yeah, you know, you know I, I'm never surprised by the tough guys who slug it out, but it's those that that you see the, their strategy in the middle of a round that can change from one thing to the another. The reason Floyd, well, yeah, as clearly I'm a fan, 
But it's just the mental aspect of did, it. Did he buy you that watch? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> just, I feel like he'd give you a watch. No, no, I, I'm, I'm not the I'm not the type of guy that you could buy something for. Yeah, <laughs> like, his, I don't take he, the, he, the gifts from other guys. Like he that. was almost too yeah. good. Yeah. It sometimes made the fights less exciting because it was like Muhammad Ali when he was really at the height of his game. Some of those fights could be some of them could be boring because he was just so much more talented. She, you knew he wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna lose when he was at the, you know, height of his powers. Oh yeah. But yeah. there's guys. Um, I, I like. Uh, I always like Roy Jones. I always thought One that guy favorites. was just the most athletic dude out there. As far as dominance is concerned, I don't think you could have many arguments about Roy Jones. Best is the most dominant things you've ever seen in the boxing ring. Andy would go out and play like an amateur basketball game mm-hmm. before the fight and yeah. then he'd show up for the fight. But the nerd that I am, I would break down what Roy was doing. And I remember meeting him. I ran into him in Florida. And uh, I just I lost, <laughs> lost who I was. He came out of an elevator. He was with an entourage. Mm-hmm. And I walked up to him and I did this. You did the bow. No, mm-hmm. I did this, which means hot hands. Oh, oh, hot hands. That's what it's I called. immediately challenged him to oh. hot hands. He walked out, looked at me, and, <laughs> he, and he just did this. And, and his entourage was like, what the hell is going on? Mm. And so we started doing the hand slap thing and, and trading. And they're, they're like, what? <laughs> just, I, I don't know. Something possessed me to do that. But he totally got it. Because he, he has this way of not indicating mm-hmm. when he throws his blows. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I really... I studied and, and practiced a lot of it. And I always think that guy is competition for me with this because he had this way of not telegraphing, even mm-hmm. throwing left hooks. He mm-hmm. wouldn't even telegraph. It's, it is a unique thing that you, you, know, you don't see in very many fighters. And I think it's really one of the reasons why he was so dominant. And we talked about it. And I remember him telling me that he developed it because his father used to make him catch chickens. <laughs> it's like a classic training right. move, right? It's just a, uh, it's a Rocky move. <laughs> it's it's yeah. like, yeah, but, but he's, you know, it's his, his father, maybe his father got it from Rocky. I don't know. But, but uh, it, I understood because, hey, you know, I imagine if you indicated before catching the chicken, it's going to see. It's yeah, gonna, you know. it's going to take off. But I, so I was like, uh, but, you know, I don't want to bore you, but it's, we got deep into... Why did that work? Because <laughs> you, you tend not, do you know you don't telegraph, which mm. is amazing. And I don't know if he understood that. How was he at hot hands? Good, really good. <laughs> then, you know, the people actually stopped us because it kept going and people were weirded out. This is like a <laughs> club type atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And the, the next thing, there's like people surrounding us going, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it's. I I'm, just knew we were from the same tribe. <laughs> I'm just glad I know what it's called because. I've always said I know rock, paper, scissors, and yeah. mumbly peg, and we never could figure out what hot hands was called. Uh-huh. I just call it slap game or something, but it's hot hands. It's you know officially is, hot hands. Yeah, this is a w- weird tangent, but when I was on the set of On Deadly Ground with Steven Seagal, there was a scene with um, with Michael, uh, you know, with um, Mike. Uh, Should I what? No, 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 no. Um, oh, God, why, why am I blanking on his name? Um, with Mike, uh, and there is a scene where this what Mike Prince. What is his last name? We'll figure it out. It's, it's crazy. We got a computer. I mean, but he's in Black Dynamite with me. He's the he's the he's the mafioso in Black Dynamite, and I can't. I'm blanked on his name. I'm so sorry if you're seeing this. But there was a scene with him in Seagal, mm-hmm. and I was a choreographer on that thing, and I Michael Caine. No, not, not Michael Caine. Michael Caine was in it, but we're getting closer. What year was this on Deadly Ground? Eighty uh, eight. Yeah, that's, I can't come up with a friend's name right now. So it, uh, this you're right. Is the, so so um, Mike Pr- Mike Star Star Mike Star. Sorry, Mike. Star. Sorry, Mike. I, I, what be, you know? Anyway. You were doing like fight choreography there. Well, yeah, I was. Uh, I was on that set. But, right, but not acting in the movie. Yeah, I was supposed to do. A fight scene with Steven Seagal. So mm-hmm. I found out it was absolutely ridiculous mm-hmm. because the movie was set in a, a, a country western bar in Alaska. 
uh-huh. and he wanted to do this martial arts fight with me. I'm like, what the hell would I be doing <laughs> right. in a country western bar in Alaska fighting on the side of racist white people? Mm-hmm. I'm like, just put put a yarmulke on me, and yeah. you know, just let's smash every stereotype in the book. And he, you know, he he responded with, "Yeah, I didn't think about that." You know what? Anyway, mm-hmm. but so I was helping out with choreography, and I made the suggestion of he and Mike Starr playing hot hands, and I kind of threw it out like a joke, but he he liked it, and it got put in the movie. Mm. So that's you know, thank, thank thanks to me, I that crazy scene where Seagal is playing hot hands with him and that was his punishment like if you miss you get slugged in the face that was Seagal coming up with that part right but you know uh, forgive the tangent but that literally you know that that hot hands thing actually I realized that it had a payoff with a movie I'm just glad I know the title of hot hands and uh, on deadly ground was like after the battleship movie, or before? yeah, yeah. Well, wait a 94. minute. I don't know. I don't know. It was a yeah. That sounds about right. Yeah, like released in ninety four at least. Released in ninety four because I think um, yeah because I I I ended up doing the Mike Tyson movie. You were right Mike after, Tyson. Yeah. yeah, right after I did that movie. Working with Steven Seagal. I mean. These days, it, it looks like he's a cartoon character more than an action star. Like, what was your experience? Uh, yeah, it was, it was interesting. I worked on three different things with him. It was a, a Nissan Soup ad. He, he had these Nissan Soup ads for Japan. Uh-huh. The, the, and, oh, it's an international and, commercial. Yeah, yeah, these commercials. And, um, and then it was on Deadly Ground, and then it wound up uh, being um, Exit Wounds. Mm. That was, I think, his last theatrical. Did you did you work with him on all those? Yeah, yeah. Did uh, was he nuts or how is an <laughs> egotist or like what what is he? Well, I think we all know. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think we all. Know. I want to judge, but <laughs> you know, I've talked to enough people in my travels where I have this idea of who the person is. Mm-hmm. And then they always go, no, 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 sweetheart, no, it's different, not him, but okay. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't, there's what I know, what I think I know, and then what other people know who've worked yeah, with people yeah. that I think I know about. But you, you're yeah. saying we're about right. Yeah, you're right. With all, right. all that we think yeah. about. Yeah. Speaking of, of people you work with, I loved you in The Dark Knight. <laughs> Thank you. And Thank you had you. that really intense scene with Heath Ledger where he had the knife in your mouth and you know say, saying you want to know how I got these scars. Yes, yes. And he explained that to you. What was what was it like working with him? And did you oh, notice that he was a, that he was guy, a different game when when he was acting in front of you? Oh my God, he was he was he was so open, so transparent, and he was uh, actually experimenting. He would he would do the voice in different modulations, mm-hmm. and he'd ask my opinion and other people's opinion. And uh, there was this one time where he. He had this tone really sounded reminiscent of Tom Waits. Uh-huh. That was really kind of like creepy, especially up close. And I was like, wow, that one is like, that one kind of, <laughs> you know, kind of gets to, you know, like kind of wonder like, what the hell are you? And he's like, you really think so? And he, he would do that. But, you know, I, he, was, he was really having fun. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, he didn't take himself too serious. He wasn't one of those method actors or anything. That's why it gets me sad when people think that because they want to believe that kind right. of a thing that oh he had dark spirits just no 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 the guy was having a great time we were doing magic tricks on set like he, you know we i was into sleight of hand stuff and he was doing the same things it was because we were you know getting better for our kids you mm-hmm. know so he was like like you know so we would trade these type of things and even times where i would like kind of stay to myself and want to give him a space he'd be like hey man what's going on like so it's like he was just really engaging with everyone. He was like a real cool guy. So not like Seagal. Yeah. I would say, yeah, it's a bit different between those two. <laughs> he didn't guys. take your hot hand suggestion, though. <laughs> no, we, we have, no, hot, no, no, we no, have no. the hot hand scene. So I'm, yeah. so I'm told. On Deadly Ground, 1994. Yes. Play your game. You play. Oh, that Mike. guy. Yeah, Mike, Mike Starr. I'll play your game afterwards if I'm still standing. Because I might not be. Because you're a tough guy. You're a man. And you got big balls. All right, all right. Don't hurt him, boy. <laughs> Here we go, Mr. Big Balls. I'm ready. Okay. You gotta be quick. You gotta be quick. You know what? Why don't you just take your best shot, pal? 
<laughs> that's that's beautiful Warner Brothers yeah. Studios right there. <laughs> oh but my it's, god! It's, it's the country they they shot in, in Alaska, but this is you know they were shooting the interiors here, and that's where he famously wanted me to do the fight scene with him. But I'm like. That's ridiculous. Now, how ridiculous would I have been in that scene? <laughs> you would have stood out, have said, my oh, yeah. friend, yeah. in that that scene. Yeah. You ever been to Alaska? No. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gotta go. I, 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 you gotta I, go. I don't think I get lost too too much. I mean, it's like where's Mike? Oh, he's that guy right that there. That guy right <laughs> there. Yeah. So um, yeah. You'd uh, love it. Mm. Uh, we've been. Yeah. It's Went crazy. The salmon run. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Look, there's it's more the salmon, salmon than water. And and that, that's I, I've been missing out. I guess it's nature, man. Do it's you as fish much or anything like that? Nature no, as you can no. take. Oh. No, no. I, I I fished when I was a kid. I don't know if I have that that kind of patience. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't <laughs> like fishing. Yeah, I, it's, I I don't. It. I've always. I'm too squeamish. I mean, I'll do it. But yeah. I, don't, I don't like the hooks and oh, the fish and the sure. bait. And, me either. I'm a. That, and, there's, there's part of me that's just. Uh, just wimpy what do you do what's your diet what's your exercise do you have any good tips any supplements in, in, any of uh, that kind of stuff in outlaw johnny black he's shirtless and he's ripped as hell oh yeah i saw the trailer well and for me i mean i i have no excuse i mean I, th- I feel like there was a time where when i was younger i was like well you know if i get a chance to do what i want to do i'm i'm you know and, I, and serve my audience there's no excuse. I, I need to be in shape, uh-huh. you know. But it's it's a way of life for me anyway. So I mean, it's like I, the way I look at it is I get to work out all the time, you know. And it's a luxury. So, um, but you know, when I get ready to do a movie or something, I like a fighter training for a fight. I I trim down, uh-huh. and I I don't get in the weight room. I'm you know people think I lift weights a lot. No, I'm I blessed to be of the. Bo Jackson, Herschel Walker kind of thing, like to where I, you know, I'm just I'm naturally pretty muscular and I just trim down. Uh, so when I'm lighter, then I move better. Mm-hmm. And so it's a, it's about you know, getting my ass on a, on a, on a track and treadmill and Cardio. trimming down. And when I do that, I have plenty of energy for the, for the movie. So I don't what do you do for diet? Well, I just, I just eat, um, just really basic stuff. I, I I pretty much do like Monday through Friday. I I do like darn near no carbs, uh-huh. and on Saturday I just go crazy uh-huh. and just do that. I just keep I just repeat that all you know, over and over. Yeah. So that tends to let like get me to trim down. Can you talk about some of the cameos in uh, Outlaw Johnny Black? Yeah, some of them, some of them, and I, did, I don't know if you knew about the the big cameo that was about to happen. That, Seagal? That, no, 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 no. Seagal couldn't make it. I think it was oh. he, but uh, he's in Russia, <laughs> right? Yeah, I think we couldn't we couldn't afford that that uh, that flight. But the man was on his way to the set. The man called Samuel L. Jackson. Wow. He was going to come and do a a cameo, but he had just gotten over a back surgery, but still was going to come. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't, in in my heart, justify him going through any kind of pain to get there. And I said, "Look, let's make a deal. Uh, after you know uh, production, if we can find a time, I'll shoot your scene separate." And that time didn't wind up, you know, coming up. But um, but I said, "Well, hey, if you got it in you, you know, I'd love to pull you in on a, on another thing." So. But that that's like that's my hero, man. But but yeah. that that was a that was a, a cameo that we were doing. But we got a lot of great cameos from a lot of cool people. I don't know if I really knew about Samuel L. Jackson before Pulp mm. Fiction. Like I I probably seen him and stuff, but I didn't Jurassic Park. Yeah, but I didn't take notice. Right. Like, really? Well, yeah. Pulp Fiction was such a tour de force yeah. with yeah, him, yeah. which is I think. A guy with that skill set with the right dialogue ends up being just a force of nature. Whereas, the, you know, Jurassic Park is fine. Like, it's a good movie and mm. stuff, but not the dialogue of a Tarantino. Yeah, you appreciate it after you already know. Mm. Samuel, Samuel Jackson, Jackson yeah. has been so infused that people, I don't think people look at him the same way that I do. But when I, I, I take my Samuel L. Jackson challenge here. 
And I go, okay, not hating on this person at all. This is another hero. But think about Denzel Washington, right? And now recast Sam Jackson in any famous Denzel Washington role. Well, not the Think hurricane, not the hurricane, but yeah. Well, well, we're talking boxing. Okay, well, let's talk about mm, training day. Yeah, deja vu. Okay, right. training day. Sam Jackson in that role. Hmm. Sam Jackson in the American Gangster. Sam Jackson and just start going totally. down the line, right? Right. Now let's switch it. Right. Now let's put Denzel in a Sam Jackson role. Right. Denzel in Pulp Fiction. Hmm. Could he? Could that be pulled off? I would say less, even with Django. Yeah. Well, then think about it. So, so when you start, no, I right. apples to apples. Yeah. No, that's that's the way. I want you to think. You know, think that's about the way that. You, have you to start do it. realizing how powerful Samuel Jackson is, and how many franchises he's a part of, and who else could do that? Yeah. There. Not that, Denzel. That's why, that's why you have my hero. That that dude is. You know, and, and that's the way you do it. Like, it's it's like, quietly, that's the baddest cat out yeah. there to me. You know, and, you know, and, and actually the proceeds show that because he's the most money-making actor in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Is he? Yeah, he's... Because he's, he's been involved he's, with franchises the that stuff. are... There's nobody, there's nobody that tops him. His... his How did you, know, you ask him to be in the movie? I they gave him the same called? speech about Denzel. <laughs> Let me tell you something. <laughs> the problem is, is Denzel's in the room and he's on speaker. <laughs> no, and but, so that fucked everything up. No, but and, and here's a cat that I swear, I swear to you, he doesn't, he has no freaking ego. He's like, the, the, like it's. Well, maybe that's why he can do what he does. Yeah, yeah because he, he has that every man thing down. He's just, a, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's a good mark on how to live and, you know, how to be. And he's, you know, so I just keep going on about that. But that, you know, I, I like people to take the Samuel L. Jackson challenge. I never thought about that. Really but look at, like, how how he's on a level by himself in my in my eyes. No, I, I agree, and I'm, I'm mm-hmm. with you. I like thinking of things that way, where you mm-hmm. go, what if you ask this to do that? I mean, mm-hmm. it can be mechanical engineering. It doesn't have to be actors. Right, but right. If you do that and you think of it in those ways, mm-hmm. and you realize, nay, I think it's kind of a one-way street. I think mm-hmm. Samuel L., with the exception of possibly the hurricane, yeah. possibly. Well, well, then, you know, you He's think a, about you know, how many times, times Denzel could do the Samuel L. Jackson yeah, Denzel stuff. on snakes That's on a plane? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. You know Terry Claiborne? Claiborne, yeah, yeah. You're talking about the, uh, the, the gym there that uh, he, he trained Denzel. Yeah, so he's well, you know, my I'm trainer a, you too. Know, yeah, you know I'm a fight nerd. But so I, I remember him training Denzel for uh, for the uh, hurricane. for hurricane. Yeah, and Denzel, man, he you know he was training hard on that. Yeah, well, he yeah. better. Mm-hmm. All right, let's give it a last plug. Outlaw, Johnny Black, name of the movie in theater September fifteenth. Michael Jai White is where you go dot com and. Uh, if you didn't see Black Dynamite, you should go back and see that. It's this is like funny. the spiritual sequel, they call it, to Black Dynamite. Oh, it is? Yeah. yeah. And Black Dynamite's got titties in it, too. Hey. In case people. <laughs> well, this one's, the whole family could come see this. This is a PG-13. This yes, yes, sir. Yeah, and, and everybody's been saying this is better than Black Dynamite. That's them That's them saying uh-huh. it. You know? Well, it's and so I've, I've been really happy about that. Well, good. good. Couldn't happen to a better guy. Wheeler Walker Jr., Chris Max, Zapata, Michael Jai White. Nah, I'm going to be in Honolulu coming up this Friday, by the way, Ooh. doing uh, doing two shows on Friday at uh, Stand Up. Where was that? Blue Note. Blue Note in Hawaii in Honolulu. So come on out and say hi. Go to AdamCrow.com for all the stuff. Until next time, Adam for Michael and Chris and Wheeler and, uh, and Harlan as well. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.